بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اور ٹی دی وی ڈسکس سب بیسک ایگزیمپلز آن دی فوریر ٹرانسفورم اوکی اولو یو می نو ایٹ ایز ویل بٹ لیٹ سی وی ڈسکس ٹو اور ٹری نمبر اوکی ایگزیمپلز سو لیٹ سی دی فرس دیٹ آئی ٹیک ایز ای ڈی سی ویلیو ڈی سی ویلیو which means my x of t is equal to a naught and what do I have to find out I have to find out the Fourier transform of this so we have the formula for Fourier transform okay but I told you what was the condition for this uh, formula to work uh, to, to calculate the Fourier transform that the signal must be absolutely integrable signal and is this signal an absolutely integrable signal no so which means we cannot use this formula for finding the Fourier transform of this signal. Anyways, let's see where do we encounter a problem. So x of j omega would be equal to negative infinity to positive infinity. My x of t is a naught. You have an exponential of negative j omega t with respect to t. A naught is a constant coming out of the integration you have a negative j omega t with respect to t what do you have is a naught you would have again the same thing negative j omega t this is with respect to t so negative j omega would come down negative j omega the limits of integration are negative infinity to positive infinity what do you have a naught for negative j omega this would now be an exponential of negative j a negative uh, yes let's say negative j infinity minus an exponential of positive j infinity and uh, isn't it like this it is if i put the j with it and take the negative upwards which means if i have a negative a naught upon omega and i have an exponential of j infinity minus exponential of minus j infinity divided by j so what do I have? What do I have? Now if I multiply and divide this by 2, so won't this be a sign thing? If I have a 2 over here, if I have a 2 over here, so does it not mean that this would be sign of infinity? So which implies that my Fourier transform x of j omega is a naught by omega times 2 times sine of infinity and sine of infinity do we know sine of infinity so this is something undefined so which means we cannot calculate this and which means we cannot calculate the Fourier transform using this formula is that clear till here so what do we do is I consider you know we consider a signal x of t having the Fourier transform x of j omega equal to a naught delta of omega a naught delta of omega this is the Fourier transform of any signal x of t we, we want to find that signal x of t so using the inverse Fourier transform formula what do we do x of t is equal to 1 upon 2 pi integration negative infinity to positive a naught delta of omega exponential of j omega t with respect to omega fine a naught is a constant comes outside of the integration a naught delta of omega upon 2 pi the integration negative infinity to positive delta of omega exponential of j omega t d omega now i told you I've, I've told you many times when we have in product impulse signal with any other signal inside the integration so the answer to that whole integration is the other function at the value at which omega is existing at which delta is existing so this would be an a naught delta of omega divided by 2 pi and this is what exponential of j omega t at omega equal to 0 and at omega equal to 0 this would be 1 so which means that my x of t will would be what which means that my x of t would be a naught delta of omega divided by 2 pi and is that clear till here fine 
basically over here you do what if you are getting confused so you put the value this becomes a constant one when it comes outside so the integration of this uh, impulse signal is then equal to one so okay so the thing that we were discussing is basically that uh, my signal was that signal that is a naught delta of omega divided by 2 pi and this has its corresponding Fourier transform uh, equal to uh, no wait have I have I made any mistake have I made any mistake no this is an a naught of 2 pi uh, wait no delta of omega I have written them yes delta of omega is the mistake of course delta of omega is the mistake we don't have any delta of omega fine so which means if a naught of 2 pi is my signal the corresponding Fourier transform is a naught delta of omega right and now what do I have is from the linearity property we know that if we multiply anything in the time domain the same thing would get multiplied in the frequency domain so the linearity property implies what that now if I say if I have a signal of a naught which means 2 pi have been multiplied on both sides so the corresponding Fourier transform would be 2 pi a naught delta of omega and this is what I wanted to prove this is for the DC value fine which means if for example my uh, my dc value is 2 right if if i have a naught equal to 2 and i need its fourier transform so the fourier transform of a constant value 2 would be equal to 2 pi into 2 so 4 pi times delta of omega and if you uh, need to draw it so how would you draw it of course you have if you have the x of t is like this this is 2 right uh, this is your x of t so the corresponding x of omega would be an impulse at 0 having the weight equal to 4 pi is that fine for the first example the dc value the second if i have is the signum function the second is your signum function and what is signum function so I think you know it very well in the signum function my x of t has three conditions it's a negative one for uh, negative values of time it's zero at zero and it's positive one for positive values of time so which means if I draw it so it is like this if this is my t axis this is my x of t axis so this is 1 over here and this is a negative 1 over here and is that fine okay so now we need to calculate the the Fourier transform of this again so what do I have the x of omega or x of j omega whatever it is unknown so again have a look is it converging it's not converging it is not converging so which means if it's not converging this is not an absolutely integrable signal and if this is not an absolutely integrable signal we directly cannot use this formula now at this point you know the properties you can use them as well but we are just trying to you know have the basics in the next video when we are discussing examples and properties so i would you know derive the the the, the this Fourier transform as a signal function by another method okay using the properties over here I would need to find myself some signal that is converging that is converging so what can I do is what can I do is I would I need to find myself a signal which is some sort of like this right I, over here I need to find myself some sort of a signal that is like this or the other way around no like this it's fine so what is this signal basically this signal we know very well this is an exponential of negative a t u of t this signal what is this we know this very well this is a negative time exponential of a t u of negative t so what can I have is I can break my signal into two parts how would this become equal to u of t if, uh, if I put my a equal to zero of course these both conditions are for a greater than zero if I put my a equal to 0 this signal would approach my original signal so what do I have what do I have is I represent my signum of t I can basically write my signum of t as u of t 
minus u of minus t right signum of t i can write as a u of t minus a u of minus t and now i write it in terms of exponentials so what do i have my u of t is what my u of t it is basically a, uh, an exponential function right over here if i see so my u of t is a function that is exponential of negative a t times u of t and what is the condition the condition is that if my limit a approaches to zero fine similarly similarly if you have your u of minus t so this is u of t this is u of minus t the black color so u of minus t would be exponential of a t times u of minus t and under what condition under the condition that my a approaches zero again so now what do i have i put it in the value uh, i put this value in the signum functions value so this two implies that the signum function would equal if I take the limit common limit a approaching 0 and over here I would have an exponential of uh, negative a t u of t and then I would have a plus exponential of a t u of minus t. Now this is your thing. So I have represented my my signum function as a function where I can calculate the Fourier transform. Now the Fourier transform for this function you know very well it's 1 over a plus j omega. For this you know very well it's 1 over a minus j omega. So what do I have is if I take the Fourier transform on both sides. If I write over here Fourier transform on both sides implies signum functions Fourier transform I represented by an x of j omega. The limit is as it is, a approaching 0. The Fourier transform for this is 1 over a plus j omega. The Fourier transform for this is 1 over a minus j omega. What do I have? I have the same limit, a approaching 0, uh, a minus j omega plus a uh, plus j omega and I believe I have a mistake. And this will be an a squared minus j squared omega squared. And I believe I have a mistake somewhere. Uh, and yes, I have a mistake. And what's that mistake? So the mistake is this thing. This is a minus. This has to be a minus. u of t minus u of minus t. So this has to be a minus a minus j omega minus this thing minus this thing now it's fine so j omega a a would cancel out so what would i have is i would have a limit a approaching zero i would write it over here to save myself space and what do i have i would have a negative j omega divided by a squared plus omega squared a squared plus omega square and now if you put the limit a approaching zero you have a negative j omega by omega squared and then you would have this would be a negative j omega by omega squared so one omega would cancel out so you would have a negative j upon omega and isn't it like this 2j upon omega yes because this is negative 2j upon omega right uh, so I have got my answer. I have got my answer that the Fourier transform for a signum function is uh, negative 2j upon omega or similarly uh, I can do what I could also write it in one other term and what is that if I multiply and divide it by a j. So what would I have? I would have a j squared upwards, this would negative 1, so negative would negative would be 2, positive 2, so I would have a positive 2j, now positive 2 divided by a j omega, this is one other term, 2 upon j omega and this is uh, more frequently used. And that is it for the second example, I believe it's clear. Now what do I have is, let's say I take the third example to be the unit step signal and I remove the board first. So I remove half of it because I may need this signal over here. Uh, 
Okay, this is uh, you know an enough space for me now. So the third is the third is the unit step signal, and you know what a unit step signal is. How would it be? It is zero for the negative values of time, and then it becomes one for the positive values of time. This is my u of t. This is one. This is with respect to t. For this signal, my x of j omega is unknown. Now, if you calculate again, if you see again, this is not an absolutely integrable signal. The Fourier transform, you cannot calculate by using this formula. How is this not an absolutely integrable? So, you know the mathematical condition. You can do it yourself. By directly looking at the waveform, this is not converging at any point. So, that is why we say it directly. Anyways, what do I do is, uh, of course, I can do it by the same method I, that I did over here. I could represent this u of t as this function. So I can represent my u of t as an exponential function that is exponential of negative a t u of t where the a approaches 0. This is the limit. So this would be some sort of the function and you do it yourself. So this could be your homework. This is your homework. You do it yourself. This is a lengthy process. This is a time consuming process. Maybe a little tough. So we, we find another alternative method. This you take as a homework. Fine. Anyways, I do it by another feather. I do it by using the signum function. I do it by using the signum function. But first, uh, I would need to, to, to see my signum function. I would try to make it somewhat similar to that. So over here, it's 0 for the negative values of time. Over here, it's a negative 1. So what if I add 1 over here? So if I add 1 to signum of t, if I amplitude shift it, right? You know the amplitude shifting. So what would I have? Uh, this would be, this, the signal would be 1 plus signum of t. Right, so this is if with respect to t, so this will become 0 for negative values of time and 2 for positive values of time. Again, have a look. Uh, the, the, sig the, the, the step signal is 1, the amplitude is 1, over here the amplitude is 2. If I do again the amplitude shifting, which means now if I divide it by a 2, so what do you have? I would have it like this. Uh, this would be my time axis, this, this would now be equal to 1 and what would be the signal? So I would have a 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 times signum of t and now this is my signal which is equal to unit step signal. So what do I have? I would write it over here that my step signal would be equal to 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 times the signum function signum of t. So let's wait for the azan to finish. Okay, so uh, now what do I have is, and now if I take the Fourier transform on both sides, so if I have the Fourier transform of, uh, let's say I do it stepwise, Fourier transform of u of t is equal to the Fourier transform of 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 is a constant, the Fourier transform of signum of t. So the Fourier transform of uh, uh, u of t is my x of j omega that is unknown for your transform of uh, a t uh, this would be what so we've already seen for a naught the Fourier transform any constant is 2 pi times a naught delta of omega so over here a naught is 1 over 2 so 1 over 2 would cancel out with a 2 so this would be a pi times delta of omega pi times delta of omega and then you have a plus 1 over 2 is like this and the Fourier transform for signum of t is 2 by j omega so this 2 and this 2 would cancel out again so you would have a simple j omega and let me check j omega plus the impulse oh, 1 over j omega yes yes 1 over j omega sorry 1 over j omega plus pi times delta of omega and this is the Fourier transform for what? For unit step signal another important relation that we have derived. Let's see, let's say we see one other example as well. Okay, the fourth example let's say for this video is I take a 
rectangular wave and I see I think we have discussed it before as well but this is something important if this is my x of t and it is ranging from what from a, a negative x to positive x the 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 height is 1 upon 2 pi and for this my x of j omega is unknown so what can i do is i can directly put it in the formula so what is the formula for x of j omega so i can write it over here x of j omega is equal to what negative infinity to positive infinity yes the signal is 1 upon 2 pi but this is existing in the limits negative x to positive x so i could just directly write it like this and multiply with an exponential of negative j omega t with respect to t what do you have 1 over 2 pi would come outside uh, negative x to positive x exponential of negative j omega t with respect to t is what uh, 1 upon 2 pi and then you have an exponential of negative j omega t this is with respect to t so you have a negative j omega downward and the limits of integration are negative x to positive x so what do you have 1 upon negative j omega into 2 pi and this would be a negative j omega x uh, minus an, a, a positive j omega x I give the j inside I take the negative sign upwards so a positive j omega x what do I have I have 1 upon 2 pi and, and, and over here I would have an exponential of positive j omega x minus an exponential of negative j omega x this is divided by a j so negative gets upward omega is where omega is over here fine so now I need a 2 over here so I need to multiply and divide the relation by 2 so this would give me a sign of omega x this would give me a sign of omega x so this 2 and this 2 would cancel out so this would imply that my x of j omega this would equal what uh, a a sign of omega x divided by pi omega sign of x omega divided by pi omega yes so this would give me a sign of x omega divided by pi omega and this is a very very important relationship again maybe we've seen it previously but due to its importance mainly i have done it again so uh, which means what if uh, you know uh, over here i i write it so if this was my x of t signal so the corresponding fourier series pair fourier transform pair is that i have a sign of x omega divided by a pi omega now if you apply the duality property over here so we we may see it in the duality property no i see it over here as well apply the duality property so what does that say now if you have this sort of some signal in the time domain which means if you have a single sign x of t divided by pi times t right this sort of a signal in the time domain so which means in the frequency domain you would have this sort of a signal where the amplitude would be divided by 2 pi and it would be also amplitude reversed time reversed fine so what do you have you would you would do what the corresponding Fourier transform pair would be like this that it would exist in this limits x limits okay so from a negative x to positive x and this would be now my corresponding x of j omega the amplitude would be one or the, this amplitude multiplied with 2 pi divided by 2 pi so anything you have seen it so I've written a 1 over here so maybe this is multiplied with a 2 pi you know how to do it what do you do in the duality property basically you you replace the t by omega fine and then you do what you do a negative omega which means you do the reversal operation you put omega equal to negative omega 
and as this particular signal is an even signal so you don't have any effect of the reversal even implies no effect of reversal and that multiplication I forgotten so I would uh, I would tell you in the next video okay that by what factor this is multiplied so this was basically the duality property if you have some sort of a signal you know if it's a let's say I, I, I you know for this sort of a signal I do what if you have a sign of 200 pi t divided by a, a pi t so what do you have over here your x is a 200 pi your x is a 200 pi so which means the corresponding Fourier transform would be like this a triangular wave omega this is with respect to omega so 200 is the x so the 200 pi is the x so it would be from a negative 200 pi to a positive 200 pi the weight the amplitude would be 1 fine if I generalize it so what do we have this function that is sine of pi t divided by pi t is basically a sink function this is a sink of t which is uh, you know related as sine of pi t divided by a pi t fine so over here have a look your x is simply a pi so which means that this if the corresponding Fourier transform if you talk of so this is my x of j omega this would be the amplitude would be 1 and this would exist from a negative pi to a positive pi why because over here my x is equal to uh, my x is equal to pi so basically you need to remember this thing sine x of t divided by pi t so what do you have this would exist from a negative x to positive x and the weight would be one of what of the Fourier transform with respect to omega that is it for this video that is it for this video see in the next video maybe we see more examples as well till the next video take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye